In this video, I will perform a linear static analysis on this cross-ply composite plate. Full details of this exercise are on page 326 of the link PDF in the video description below. I will go ahead and create a folder here, I'll call it problem 02, and I'll start patch round. Maximize this, create a new model, save it in the same folder. Click OK on the form on the right. Here in geometry, I'll create surfaces using the XYZ method. So from the origin, I'll define a vector so that the width of this surface is 1.5 inches and the height is uh, 1 inch. And the units for this exercise are in pounds, inches, and PSI. Now I'll create, I'll leave auto execute on, so all I have to do is click this point, this point, and this point to create my three other surfaces. I'll go ahead and define my materials by going to the properties tab and clicking 2D orthotropic. Here I'll define my lamina, so the name I'll give this material is lamina under input properties. My Young's modulus is 7.8 E6 PSI. My next Young's modulus is 2.6 E6 PSI. My Poisson ratio is 0.25. My shear modulus is 1.25 E6. My first thermal expansion coefficient is 3.5 E to the negative 6. Second is 11.4 E negative 6. My reference temperature of this lamina is 270 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'll click OK and hit apply. And now I've created my lamina. And you can see this if you pull up the model tree. I've defined a 2D orthotropic lamina so far. So back in properties, I'll define my composite laminate by clicking this icon. This form pops up. I will call this laminate. Here I'll insert three rows. The material is lamina. So I have three layers using the lamina I just defined. The thickness of the first layer is 0 0.058 inches. Hit enter. My next thickness is 0.4583 inches. Hit enter. And my last thickness is 0 0.058 inches and hit enter. My orientation of the top layer is 0, next layer is 90, and the next layer is 0. Here I'll select this cell and I'll click delete select a row so I get rid of the fourth layer. Click apply. Now you see that my lamina has been defined here. If I click show lamina properties, I can view the ABD matrices and the various other properties here. I'll minimize this. Now I'll go ahead and apply this laminate to the four surfaces. So here under 2D properties, I'll click 2D shell, call this composite plate. Under options, I select laminate here. Under input properties, select the laminate for the material and my material orientation will be a vector and I'll define it as a vector going in the x direction so 1 0 0 click OK select the application region this is applied to all the surfaces so surfaces 1 through 4 click add click OK and apply now the vector it's going in this direction. So when I display parametric directions, I can tell that my normal is this way. And since the x direction or the zero direction is this way, the ply orientation is positive in this direction. So let me turn this off. Go back to this. Now I will go and define my boundary conditions. So go to this tab, 
click displacement constraint. I'll call the first one CLY for center line about the Y. So click input data for translation, simply prevent translation in the X direction. Click OK, select application region. Here, click curve icon. So we just pick curves, goes one, goes another. Click OK and apply. I'll make another constraint called center line or CL underscore X. So restrain this line. So under input data, restrain the Y direction. Click OK, select application region, select this curve, add it, select this curve, and add it. Click OK and apply. Now I wish to constrain this in the Z direction, so name a new one called Z constraint under info data. Leave the T1 blank, the T2 blank, uh, but zero, but for the Z direction, put a zero. Click OK, select application region select surfaces here, click pick all, that was a bad idea, click surface here, there's a difference, this icon includes the point, curves, surfaces, and solids. This surface ex is exclusive to surfaces, so when I click that and pick all, selects all surfaces, add it, OK, and apply. I'll go ahead and add my in-plane load, so click distributed load. The name is NX, target element type is 2D under input data. We will, F1 will be blank or zero. Uh, F2 will be negative 200, so it points away. And um, zero for the last one. Click OK, select application region. Select this, hold shift, and select the sides. Notice they turn orange. Click OK and apply. Next, I will apply my nodal temperature. So click temperature here. And I know the temperature we are to prescribe is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So under input data, type in 70 for the temperature. For the application region, select. Make sure this is selected. Surfaces and pick all. So I have surfaces one through four here. And apply. So now I can turn off the markers using the model tree. Now I can go ahead and mesh this. So under meshing, click uniform. I want the bottom surfaces here or curves meshed with ten elements each and the same set for these. The sides, I want five elements per curve. So I select this, followed by this one, and that's it. Here under measures, select surface, select pick all. So you have surfaces one through four here, and click apply. Make sure to equivalence after you're done meshing you notice that it removed duplicate nodes here along the boundaries of the surfaces. I can then go to analysis, analyze the entire model here, click apply to analyze this model. Now let me first go ahead and import my results, click XDB, click apply. Let me hide the model tree, go to results. I will click quick plot, or actually I'll click fringe. So here, I'm going to be my stress sensor in the X. For the first layer, I get, well, let me fix this slightly so it's easier to read. So I get negative 6,000 PSI in the X direction. And when we compare this to the value we are to supposedly get, the theory tells us we get approximately negative 6 
thousand here. When we go to layer two, we get a stress of minus 645 PSI. And then you'll see it here, it's actually on, on the other side. The values we're looking at right now are the layer, the local stresses. So this would be the, the stress in the one direction for layer two, this value for layer three, and so on. So if I would like to get the global stresses, I would need to transform the results to the global coordinate system. So here I've gone to plot options and select the, the global coordinate axis in which to transform my results. So now if I go to layer one, you see the results are the same as before. But this time if I go to layer two, now I don't get the, the minus 645 I had before. I actually get 1691 now. So now I can view the results. So we view this value, this value, this value, and these are global values now for this 3001. So here I would go to the Y component, view the layer one results and click apply. I get a 3000 PSI for layer two. Get a 645 PSI for layer three. I would get what I got a moment ago. 3000 PSI. And then for the shear stresses here, simply come here, say I want to view the XY component. And you'll see that the values are, are small enough where we can say they're essentially zero. I know the friend says otherwise see the small decimal values and for layer two. So it's essentially zero. Now, now in the second half of the video, I would just model one fourth of the section and make use of symmetry. So let me go back here, erase that. And now I'll just model this top right section. So the first thing I have to do is go to my meshing tab and delete the mesh. Here in the finite element entity list, pick all and apply. Clean it up. And now let's mesh just the top right section and apply. Now I must modify my boundary conditions. So in the home tab, click the model tree. We will just modify the displacement constraints for C C L underscore Y. You would right click on this and modify it. And the modification involves fixing the rotation about the fifth direction which would be rotation about the Y. The next thing would be to modify seal X. Here, you would add an extra constraint that would be rotation about the X. Now, let me turn on the markers just to make sure everything's in place. Now, our boundary conditions are applied to the geometry, but since there's no mesh for these other three surfaces, nothing really will happen in the analysis. Uh, the focus of the analysis will be on the finite elements since that's where the boundary conditions occur. So now when I analyze this, I'll be asked to replace the previous files.
I will go ahead and clean this up and then pour my XDB. Now, first thing I have to do is under fringe, make sure this is, make sure I've selected stress in the X component and I've transformed this into my global coordinate system. So we get the value we've got before. We get the same value as before for the second layer. For the third layer, we get the same result. So here I've just modeled one fourth of the section as opposed to the entire section. And I've made use of symmetry constraints to reduce the model size here. Make sure to save your model. And this concludes this example.